What's up guys, welcome to another episode. I'm here with Barbara. Barbara, you want to introduce yourself? This is a Ricoh TLS 401. Cool thing about this camera is you can actually use a top-down viewfinder or your standard viewfinder in the back. So I'm gonna find out, is this a gimmick or is it actually useful? We'll see, I think it's actually bullshit, but I've never shot with this camera, so we're gonna find out. Okay. So the viewfinder on this camera isn't especially bright. So when I'm stopping down to f16, it gets really, really hard to see. So I'm having to use the rear viewfinder instead, which kind of defeats the purpose of the top-down one. So I'm going to test it out a little bit more. I'm going to test out shooting maybe at a lower aperture and then seeing if I can see more, seeing if I find it more useful in that situation. That's good, right? That's fine. Oh yeah, I don't really trust it and it actually has a pretty good light meter because you can do spot or average, but I'm actually just going off the Sunny 16 to double check it. Which is kind of funny, but I trust myself more. I love the I know. I know, it's like, it's because you're not trying. No, no, it's on it. I have this joke. Thoughts on the top-down feature so far? <laughs> uh, I guess it does come in handy for like situations like this. You can technically get lower um, than you would if you were using the eye-level viewfinder. So I think I'm already starting to change my mind. It's kind of fun to use the top-down. I think. That's because I'm a process photographer. I really love the process of taking photographs. I'm not as concerned. Of course, I'm concerned with the results, but I enjoy that experience. And because it's a novel one, it's a lot of fun. Good luck. Oh, the timer's on. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like... <laughs> there it yeah. goes. Except for this cow, it's pretty boring here because people are boring here. This is the bougie part of Venice, which didn't exist a few years ago. Um, so I'm not getting that many shots. I was coughing, sorry. Oh. What were you saying? Tell everyone, please don't take boring photographs, but when you're trying to finish a roll for the sake of a video, you've got to start doing it. It's not that this is boring, it's actually really interesting and beautiful and you can create some abstract work. However, there's no life to it, there's no meaning behind it. That's why I like to photograph people, but whatever. That was in the lens. <laughs> Good job. No, I wanted the green. <coughs> Actually, it's kind of better that way. There's like, oh, you're gonna take pictures. Oh. I've never seen this uh, tactic. I have a place called. Try not to step. They have a very iconic uh, palm tree reflection in the back. Okay, so you guys may have noticed that a few of my shots have this black bar across the top. That's because the next day I planned on selling this camera and when I opened up the back I realized I forgot to wind the film. I quickly closed the door, wound it up, hoped it came out, but I didn't know if it really would. Uh, I just had too much going on that week, I shot a lot of rolls of film and I just completely forgot about that roll. So I decided I'd go out and just shoot around Silver Lake and Los Feliz before I taught. And then I made another mistake. I had my hair in the way of the lens for a few shots. So that's what that like curly, frizzy garbage is. That's my hair. Um, I photographed a few of my students and then popped it into the developer right away and processed the roll. As you guys can see, the images came out pretty sharp. That's mostly because of the Yashica lens. It's the Yashica 50mm 1.7. Uh, I think Yashica is a very underrated brand and I would really look into them. But if anything, it almost feels too sharp at times. 
if you do any sharpening, especially in post, which I try not to do, and I still ended up with very sharp images. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. I've got more coming up, and uh, see you at the next one.